Hello everyone, my name is Randy and today we're going to be diving in to a no prayer fire cape. I've never actually dived into just a traditional no prayer fire cape on this channel and I kind of wanted to do that in today's video because I do need two no prayer fire capes on my new account I've been working on. And that's because one, I need one to train with and two, I need one to sacrifice to get into the inferno whenever I actually take on Zuck with no prayer, hopefully one day on this very same account. So yes, I'll be sacrificing one of my no prayer fire capes today just to get into the inferno. And that means eventually down the line, I mean business. So I want to go in depth in today's video on the one prayer fire cape or no prayer fire cape strategies and how I've used them in my history of doing over 500 no prayer fire capes. That's right. I've done over 500 of these capes. I actually haven't done one of these things in probably almost four years, but yeah, today we're going to be delving and exposing the secrets, you may say, of the one prayer or no prayer fire cape. I like to say these are still kind of secret because there's really no guides out there. Even four years ago, the guides I see today are outdated from that time period. So I want to shed some light on maybe how you can even get a fire cape with no prayer if you have a specific peer build and you won't have to take part yourself in that massive market that is no prayer fire cape purchases. Because one, that's against the rules and two, they're just hella expensive. Honestly, I'm going to tell you this from a first hand perspective. I'd guess around 99.5% of every single fire cape you see in the wilderness or on an account without prayer has been purchased from a seller. So maybe we can actually get that statistic down a little bit and I'm gonna show you how easy this can actually be and how even welfare this can be if you make it to be. Even in today's purple sweet market where sweets are upwards of 8K each, there's gonna be ways to save sweets that I'll go over in this video as well as save on gear that you'll need to actually use inside of the fight caves. Lastly, in this video, you'll see me focus a little bit more on some extra strength bonus I'll need before I finally send this account to Ammonite Crabs nearly permanently until it's completely maxed. But before we get into all of that, I wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsor for today's video, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. They purchase 90% of the products that go into these boxes from small businesses. Each month they introduce cool new products, most of which you would never even think where to look for. Every box has a $70 retail value, but you only pay a fraction of the price and you can preview your box before it's even shipped. Their products are really nice. And yes, even I myself have gotten sent some of these boxes very recently. Firstly, I got the signature box because I want to be classy and I want to smell classy as well. This box comes with three signature colognes as well as three bar soaps, which are very nice. I also picked out the carry box and this came with a very compact wallet as well as my favorite color, a gold ballpoint pen with a magnetic cap and refillable ink. Lastly, I went with the Terra box because, well, I like knives. So what are you waiting for? Be like me, smell classy, look classy with your nice gold ballpoint pen, and cut some stuff up with knives. To get 20% off your first box, click the link in the description and enter code RENDY20 at checkout or go to bespokepost.com forward slash RENDY20. So yeah, this is gonna be kind of like a mixture of a guide and just a progress video. Not only am I going to be getting a fire cape with no prayer, but I'm going to be getting two, sharing some secrets along the way, and also getting some other strength bonus this account needs towards the end of the video. This just dawned on me, but there is a Grandmaster Combat Achievement, which requires players to complete the fight caves without losing any prayer. So even if you're not a really specific PKing build or low prayer build, this could possibly help you down the line with that combat achievement known as No Time for a Drink. And that's because you could start this entire method out with zero prayer points and the bats could hit you and you technically would never lose a prayer point because you're already drained to zero. Therefore, this method would be an easy way for anyone to complete that combat achievement and it really is not as hard as people think it is it might be even easier than trying to avoid every single bat inside the fight caves and losing that singular prayer point i also wanted to show that this can be done with practically no gear at all yeah i'm even gonna wear a cowl for this i'm not even gonna buy a coif and i do have 40 defense on this account so i don't know why i'm doing this but i'm wearing a leather body as well why not let's make it a little bit interesting a little bit fun let's go into this fight cave challenge a little bit disadvantaged so you can possibly see, you know, what you have to go through if you're trying to save sweets. This is even possible on an Iron Man. I'm going to try to keep this goal under, let's say, 1100 purple sweets consumed. So realistically, that's not too many. It's only about 9 mil in purple sweets on the higher end of that if you buy them for over medium price. But I think I can get this whole cape done in under 9 mil of consumable gear. 
Now here is the catch. If you want to consume, I'd say less than 1500 purple sweets and really save your money, I would definitely recommend starting this at over 75 range. The blowpipe does come into play for a lot of this and it saves a lot of sweets the faster you can blowpipe down some of these 360 majors whenever you're head on ticketing them with auto retaliate, which I'll get onto later. As well, this method is going to require, absolutely require a dark bow. So at least 60 range for this method and a blowpipe as well or an MSB imbued if you're lower range than that, which again, I do not suggest. I mean, I've even scrapped the dark bow before on like a 50 range account and switched it for a magic composite bow, but that took me like 10 hours and I do not recommend you doing that unless you're trying to make a really weird specific account, but it can be done. So I guess technically the dark bow isn't required, but some long range bow is definitely required. And I suggest the dark bow, a twisted bow would be even better. Yes, but I am pretty poor and we're gonna keep this on welfare status, at least for this first attempt here. So yeah, dark bow is a must a go to and dragon arrows a must to go to as well because the special attack on dragon arrows guarantees more damage than ruin arrows and you're really not actually going to be using that many arrows even without an avis accumulator. This account does have an avis accumulator but even on an account that does not you could get a range cape if you're 99 range because avis does require 15 prayer and even if you don't have any sort of way to accumulate your arrows I would say you're not going to be using more than 600 dragon arrows in total without an avis accumulator even unless you're just extremely low range. I would also recommend getting the best darts you can being dragon darts for your blowpipe if you have the money to spend. We're kind of on welfare status once again so I'm gonna go ahead and go with amethyst darts. These are much much cheaper and honestly they're not a big difference but DPS inside this fight cave is a little bit important and having the best darts at your disposal is gonna be pretty important as well. If you're just practicing go for the amethyst ones. If you're taking a serious attempt go for the dragon. Now I would recommend 50 hit points at least because that's going to put you over the max hit of the mage and that's just an easy way to make sure you don't get one shot at the start of some of these waves. 75 HP though is going to be a huge gain. It makes this almost I would say 33% faster because the ring of suffering and the ability to add recoils to that ring makes your DPS a lot quicker because there's some waves you actually have to face tank mages with tickets and auto retaliate with a blowpipe it makes these waves especially much much quicker being able to recoil every single ticket along with blowpiping every three or four times you eat and of course you have the anguish necklace which adds a range percentage damage increase and accuracy increase to all your hits so that helps as well with the 75 hit points so i'm not 75 hit points and therefore i would recommend a fury but we're going full welfare today. We're using a glory. As well, I'm going to need some food. There's some waves I do like to eat up on after a certain alignment of NPCs that are just a given to where you want your HP to be high very quickly. And there's only like two real waves. I think the food is absolutely necessary. So I do like to bring some high tier food like manta rays or dark crabs as well as just a few brews. Not too many though, as you really won't have to actually eat anything besides purple sweets for most of this fight cave. And this is also why I choose a normal restore over a super restore in my inventory because if you did not know this, a normal restore actually restores your combat stats more than a super restore does. A super restore only just restores non-combat stats. That's the only perk it has and it also gives prayer. But a regular restore for this specific instance is better because you can do a 4 to 1 brew to restore ratio rather than a 3 to 1 brew to super restore ratio, making you have to use less inventory spaces on super restores versus normal restores. Now, if you have access to ancients, blood spells are kind of a little bit of a perk. That's just if you want to use less sweets because you can heal between waves using your blood spells. And it's not really necessary, but I'm going to bring it for this welfare attempt because I'm trying to save as many sweets as possible. But as most of you know, blood spells and ancients desert treasure requires, I believe, 11 prayer to complete that quest. So a lot of you will not have ancients. As well, I recommend everyone bring at least one or two of any kind of chinchampa. Now, if you have the money to spend, buy black chins, buy the best you can get, but you'll need at least one chinchampa for Jad and Luri and the healers, possibly two if you mess up and want to relog. So I do suggest getting at least two chinchampas, but you can bring more if you want to speed up the wave some because there's some NPCs that are smaller behind bigger NPCs. There's some clumps of NPCs, of course, that you can use chinchampas on to speed up little bits and bobs inside of the waves. As well, you're going to want Bastion Potions or Ranged Potions. Divine Bastion Potions are going to be the best thing you can get. But like I said, this first attempt we're doing here is going to be Welfare status. So I'm getting regular Ranged Potions of all things. Yeah, I would suggest for yourself though, if you have the money, if you're not an Iron Man, get Divine Bastions. They're just all around better. And I think you can survive off maybe six of these throughout the entire process of the waves on an account with over 75 range. Now, if you don't care about speed or any of that, 
Range potions really aren't a necessity, except for maybe like one wave to speed up some DPS. You could substitute these for food and more brews if you feel more comfortable with more food in your inventory. Of course, you're gonna also want the best range bonus you can get for your account. Prayer bonus doesn't matter, it's all about range bonus. Get everything you can wear, unlike me, who's wearing a cow right now and a leather body. Just get the best thing you can afford to wear. For very specific situations, you're also going to need a self-inflicting damage item like a rock cake, and I'll get into why you need that later. You're also going to want to go ahead and set the Ruin Light custom left click option on, guzzle with that thing, and not the traditional eat. And very lastly, I would put four phoenix necklaces into the bottom of your inventory. I'll get into why you need these later, but there's four waves I use these on very specifically to make these waves much, much, much easier than they actually would be without them. As well, one of these phoenix necklaces is not technically required unless you have really, really good ping, but I have awful ping and I don't like risking myself in weird situations, so I always use the fourth p-neck on wave 61 and I'll get into that later on. I almost forgot, for very rare instances you're going to need a mid-ranged weapon like an MSB imbued or a Carol's crossbow. Okay, so that should be all your gear. If you somehow have vengeance or something like that, throw it in a rune pouch, why not? It's extra DPS. Bring as much food as you want, as little range pots or as many range pots as you want, and just kind of experiment with the inventory. The musts are the chinchampas, the blowpipe, the dark bow, and the phoenix necklaces. Now for the rotation. You're going to want to do rotation number two, and that's because this rotation has the least amount of 360s you have to face tank and basically auto retaliate and blowpipe. It also has the least amount of 360s you're going to have to lure, meaning less complex strategies and less phoenix necklaces you'll have to use. If you want to see everything laid out wave by wave where every NPC spawns, you can go to the wiki, I'll link that in the description below, for rotation number two. If you want to get rotation number two as easy as pie, you're going to have to go in at these specific times inside of the fight caves. Now this time does change based on the actual daylight savings time as it's ran on a global timer, but here are the times in central standard time. Personally, I wait 10 to 15 seconds after my computer clock hits the minute and then I go in. 99% of the time, I hit rotation number two, as long as there's not some weird fluke or server lag. You'll know though if you hit it correctly, whenever you get the first spawn with the 22 in the middle, and the second spawn with the 22s in the south and the southeast spawn. From there you can continue on and actually get into the one prayer or no prayer fight cave. This is where you're going to spend that 75 range, I'd say between 2 and 3 hours depending on how perfectly you execute every single wave. If you get higher range and even more massive gear, a little bit of defense and a little bit of prayer, I could see this going down even to an hour total time if you really maximize efficiency. Alright, so waves 1 through 30. Honestly, waves 1 through 30 are not bad at all. You just kind of need to know where to position yourself and how to get away from the 90s in certain situations as well as 180s. There's a couple waves I'll go over here in a second that actually gives you a very optimal spawn and an optimal place to start the wave. But if you're not comfortable here, I would suggest requesting a logout every single wave once you hit the 90s around wave 8 or 9. While logged out, you can use common sense or my pastebin link in the description below to see where you need to stand for the next wave and head that way. For many of the waves in this method, you're going to want to stand in the very northeastern corner of the fight cave. Sometimes you're going to want to stand on the western side of the north rock in very rare instances. As well, hugging the southeast side of the eastern Italy rock is going to be good for 180s in a lot of these circumstances. Now I told you I wasn't going to show you every wave, but I'm going to link you a pastebin below that's got a very old map of optimal places to stand for each of the spawns, and if it's seen as blank, just take that as to stand at the far eastern corner of Italy. If it says corner, go to the northeastern corner. This is kind of a vague map, but I'll put a key at the top to try and actually make you understand what's going on, because this was made over six years ago. For me personally, on this welfare account even, with some pretty crappy stats and gear, I'm not going to log out every wave from 8 to 30. Instead, I kind of know where everything's going to spawn, I can remember it even way back from when, and I'm going to try and just run to spots without having to re-log every wave. But if you're a first time, I would definitely suggest re-logging as much as possible if you don't know what the next wave has coming up so you can plan and prepare for the next wave, as well as read the pace bin as to where to possibly stand for the most optimal DPS and most reasonable way that you're not going to get a lot of hits off on yourself. So yeah, all you need to do is, I technically like to do this while I'm in combat in case I have forgotten and already actually clicked logout, 
But if you click log out for the first time on your wave, it's going to then say, okay, we're gonna pause the end of the wave and then you can actually log out. Now, if you click it a second time, you're gonna log out before the wave ends and you'll have to restart it. So you're gonna wanna make sure you only click log out once and then at the end of that wave, it's going to pause and then you can click log out for the second time and when you log back in, you'll be on the next wave. So like the pastebin says, a lot of these are blank and that means we're gonna start on the northeastern corner of Italy Rock, which is the eastern rock in the fight caves. For the first few 90 waves, the 90s are gonna line up perfectly behind Italy Rock. And this is where you're going to use your dark bow and swap hits with the 90s. You're gonna hit two times on the 90 with your massive range, and he's just gonna hit once on you. And likely if you have HP, you're not even going to have to tick eat at this point because the 90s hits are so low. But if you do have low HP, and you have to, you can simply just tick eat as you run back around the rock between your dark bow hits. This trade-off hit method works as well whenever you have an NPC like a 360 or 90 on the western side of the north rock. You can simply click the NPC, you'll run up and make it back in just enough time before taking a second hit from the 90 or 360 with your dark bow. I've noticed this is a lot easier than it used to be. I used to have to actually go ahead and click out with a yellow click, then click the NPC, and no, this was not due to the GPU plugin. Even with the GPU plugin on back in the day, you could not see these 360s further out in the instance, so this is a very recent update. But for a lot of the 90 waves, you're going to want to eat up the full before you actually have to take them on, especially if they're facing you head on from the southwestern corner coming at you or from the middle spawn coming at you. And that's because you're going to take a few hits before you get into tick eat range with these NPCs that you're just going to have to tank. This is true for the 90s and later 360s because if you're not in a specific range of them before they start firing their attacks at you, their attacks are so long range and delayed that they're going to fire one of their projectiles at you before the next one hits you, making it nearly impossible to tick eat these attacks. So long story short, for the head on 360s and 90s coming your way that you can't deflect behind a rock with a big giant dark bow, you're going to want to get in close range as fast as possible in order to waste minimal amounts of food. So if you're a little bit higher defense, you don't have to waste as many sweets here. You can eat up to maybe 30 HP or heal up to 30 HP in my case using blood spells and welfare gear before the next wave and usually get just inside the 90s actual tick eatable zone before confrontation and therefore not wasting as many sweets. If you're a little bit lower defense, if you have lower range, I would suggest eating to at least 50 hit points and then running up on the 90 as you're going to take roughly three hits before you get into his zone and he maxes 13 on each of these hits, meaning he can max you out for a 39 before you're possibly able to tick eat him. Now, once you're in his range, you can tick eat him fine. You just have to actually tank those first three hits or use a Phoenix necklace, which I'll get into later for the 360s in the very odd waves later on that you'll have to actually lure yourself into their tick eatable zone. For these 90s here though, unless you're just like 20 HP, Phoenix necklaces are not necessary and you can just eat up, be prepared for the next wave and run towards them as soon as they get into placement like you see here. This is also where your mid-range weapon comes into play as some of the spawns from these 90s are going to be from the southwest corner of the fight caves and you're going to be running from the northeast corner. This is going to pull you out too far in many instances where other 90s or 360s or even 180s sometimes actually can hit you. Now there are some instances where you pull yourself out three tiles and you can blow pipe as seen here but that's only with the 180s. See if there was a 360 or a 90 behind that rock you would be getting slaughtered by two NPCs at once and therefore you could not tick eat because two NPCs are hitting you at the same time. You wanna make sure you separate all these NPCs out one at a time. That is the key behind this entire fight cave experience with no prayer. Separate the NPCs out and get in their tick eatable zone. Now, once I'm in this 90s tick eatable zone, I can either just out DPS it, and if he never gets me under 13 HP, I never have to actually tick eat him. But if there's a small chance he gets me under 13 HP, all I would simply do is turn my auto retaliate on and then start tick eating as soon as he starts hitting me under that 13 HP. This would result in a slower kill of the 90, but I'd still get it done. I would just have to remember after that to turn my auto retaliate off because I'll likely be dark bowing NPCs over the rocks later on and I don't want to have auto retaliate on during those circumstances. Only when I'm in close proximity and trying to actually kill an NPC that's all by itself. 
For instance, if I tried to actually just auto retaliate with a dark bow from its longest range here on the Italy rock rather than go in and out of the rock, the 360 or the 90 would double hit me and hit over my HP, making it impossible to tick eat these NPCs because once again their projectile is so long that they'll fire a second one before the first one registers a hit on you, meaning it will calculate damage based on your previous HP and it'll just over hit your HP and kill you from where you're standing near that rock because you're just so far back from it. So you want to make sure you turn auto retaliate off or this NPC is going to over hit your ticket and kill you from behind the rock. Now from some instances in these waves it's better to stand northwest or southwest based on where a 90 spawns and where everything else spawns in the wave. You can do this but you cannot flinch around the western rock with a dark bow because it's too long of a range. You'll get hit twice going back to the other side of the rock and by that time it's going to overshot your HP like I said because you're so far back from the NPC. The western rock is a no-go for using a dark bow and a ticky. It just won't work and therefore you have to do a strategy like this. Run a few tiles north, step out east and back north and back south, never get hit, but pull the 90 or in later cases even the 360 to the spot and from here you can use a melee weapon if you have good melee stats you can flinch melee on this npc wait for the hp bar to disappear or you can simply run back and turn on auto retaliate with a blowpipe and tick eat that npc down if you have good ping which i do not at all my internet is terrible thanks again cox by the way you can actually run out with a dark bow hit this npc then run back and tick eat all in a very short period of time i don't like risking that and as well that cost is sweet in my instance, we're going welfare status for this first attempt, so I'm going to use my melee weapon here being a very cheap ZGS, and I'm just going to flinch these NPCs that I pull out to these corners on the northeast or southeast sides of the rock that I have lured here. Lastly, for instance, you'll see in the paste bin dock that I actually have wave 26 labeled as northwest and wave 28 labeled as northwest. These are just very rare instances where the actual 180 and 90 NPCs line up perfectly and I can kill them in the way you see right now on screen and then request a log out and then go to the next spot in the next wave be in the corner or the Italy rock traditional spot and be prepared for that next wave. All right, so the last wave, wave 30 for instance, you can sit southeast and this traps both 180s. This is a great spot to sit in a lot of these waves with 180s because every single 180 that comes from every direction but southeast and southeast two there is going to get trapped on that Italy rock and you can just blow pipe them down as fast and as easy as can be. And finally, we're prepared for wave 31, the first 360 wave. So wave 31 through wave 62, the finale. Luckily, what I've already mentioned a lot with the 90s is going to be applicable to the 360s. You want to get in their ticketable zone as quick as possible, if not at the very start of the wave, or you just want to get around the northeast side of the North Rock or the north side of the Italy East Rock. That's because you could once again use Dark Bow on these NPCs and tick heat every one of their hits making it extremely fast, exchanging one dark bow hit for one very small tick eat from these 360s. But specifically on wave 31, the very first wave, you're going to see an instance of something that's a little bit different and something I'm going to be doing throughout many of these waves in the last 30. That is starting the wave right next to the 360 so you don't have to lure it at all and waste phoenix necklaces or massive combo eats and risk dying to get into its tick eatable zone. You would literally just log into the middle of the cave, move a few tiles east, Turn on auto retaliate, tick eat the whole thing with a blowpipe and there you go, it's dead. The next wave for instance, wave 32, I would just sit behind the Italy rock and exchange dark bow hits by tick eating the 360s hits and then handle the 22. Same with the next wave and the wave after that I'm going to go northwest. Do the little pull trick you saw earlier by actually luring over the 360 and then I'm just going to flinch it with a melee weapon to save sweets and to save money. Or you could just run out south as I do later on and tick eat this thing with a blowpipe if you want to risk it and if your ping is nearly perfect. Or you could even do the crazy strategy of running in and out with a dark bow hit and speed up the process a little bit more. But once again, my ping is really bad and I don't want to do that. You'll see what I mean later by me saying my ping is really bad. Trust me, you'll see. So the wave after that, we once again utilize the new strategy of just logging in next to where the 360 spawns and going a bit east. Here this will trap the 45 and 22, both melee NPCs, to the west of its body, meaning you just have to deal with the 360 
and then as soon as that 360 is dead you can just simply run to the southern side of Italy Rock to trap off the 45 and the 22 behind it. This makes it much easier because you're not wasting supplies luring these 360s and this is once again my rotation number two is great because it throws the 360 in the middle of the spawns on the waves earlier than other rotation and therefore you can just log in and take it the 360 right off the start of the wave from the middle location. From here the pattern you'll see gets very similar and you'll kind of be able to work it out yourself. If not, there's a pace bin. Although the pace bin's a little confusing. For instance, it says corner optional on wave 39. What does that mean? Well, if you go to the corner, you can trap off both the Northwest 90 and the 360 to the Southeast and just then take on the 22 middle. But if you have higher range, higher HP, you can just sit in the traditional spot just north of Italy Kill the 22 very quickly with a blowpipe before the 90 even comes out of the woodworks. Then take on that 90 with your mid-tier range weapon being like an MSB imbued, which I'm using here. And once again, you need that longer range weapon because you don't want to get dragged out and you want to still be in the tick eatable zone. So you don't want a very long range weapon like the dark bow. Like the 90s, you can use the same concept on the 360s with the Northern Rock as well, as long as you're east of it. You're just going to go ahead and poke your head out, shoot a Debo hit, then run back perfectly timed with a tick eat, and there you go. You can hit the 360 and exchange hits from not only the Italy Rock, but also the Northern Rock as well. Wave 41. Here is where it gets tricky and the pace pin might confuse you a little bit. This is the part I was talking about that's going to require the Phoenix necklaces if you don't want to just get slaughtered and that's because you're going to have to get into the tick eatable zone of a 360 in a very short amount of time. Pause the wave prior to 41 and all of these lure waves. Go ahead and use a rock cake and make your HP all the way down to one or make sure it's low enough from the previous wave. Once you've done that, then actually log out and prepare yourself because next wave, you're going to have to run as fast as you can to the northeastern corner of the map. If you're not quick enough, some of these middle spawn 360s can hit you before you reach the corner of the map, but then they'll have to catch up with you. Just be prepared to tick eat one hit if you hear a sound effect from the major, and that's another important thing I forgot to mention. Make sure sound effects are on throughout this entire experience. It just makes tick eating a hell of a lot easier. You just time the tick eat between whenever you hear the major sound effect and whenever it hits your character. All right, you've made it to the corner now. With or without a major hit, your HP should be well enough low to actually activate your Phoenix Necklace. Throw the Phoenix Necklace on and wait for the sound of the Major's next attack. As soon as you hear that sound, you're going to want to click south all the way back to the northern side of the Italy Rock, but not too close to the 360. If you time this all right with your Phoenix Necklace on and tick eat all the way there, your Phoenix Necklace should then null the middle hit that would actually stack you out and kill you because you're so far away from it. And by the time the hits actually register on you, the 360 will be in the tick eatable zone and you'll be safe and just fine. This is because after a Phoenix Necklace procs for a few ticks, it clears the damage queue, meaning the next hit from any NPC that's stacked over the previous damage is not going to show up on you at all. I learned this a very long time ago and I'm pretty sure I'm like the first person to use Phoenix Necklaces in this way as I did this back in 2015 on the 25 Combat Fire Cape. Always put on a Phoenix Necklace when in doubt. As well, the other melee NPC being the 45 will get stuck behind the 360 at this point. Everything's worked itself out. You're in the tick eatable zone of the major with auto retaliate on. You'll want to turn that off after you kill it, but then you're going to want to just run around the area and eat purple sweets as much as possible, hitting the 45 and kiting it and avoiding as much damage. Here is where you could actually use one piece of food after you've killed the major to prepare yourself for the 45, which can hit sevens and is pretty accurate if you're only one defense. On wave 43 of the pacemen where I discuss hugging the edge of the rock, if you actually hug the exact corner of the northern rock on the very northern side, then you can block off southeast two spawns and that's going to block off the 90. Now here is where you might have to do some more eating as you're going to have to basically face tank some 45s and 22s, but you're going to have food at your disposal and you're going to have a blowpipe hopefully so this should not be a big deal. You can then step out and tick eat the 90 if needed and then finally lure over the 360, tick eat that as well or rely on a melee flinch like myself to save on sweets. 46 is gonna be another instance of why rotation two is so great because the middle 360 spawn on this rotation once again I don't even have to move the 360 and waste a Phoenix necklace. 
I can just sit here north of the 360 because the 180 is a southern spawn and a melee NPC. That means it's going to be blocked off by the 360's massive body. As well, once the 360 is dead and I've auto retaliated the whole thing, I can just move further north towards the western side of the north rock and trap off that 180, blowpipe it, and finish off the wave. So, pretty normal from here till about wave 50. Here's going to be another 360 lure. This one's a little bit different though. This time I'm going to be starting on the east side of the north rock and running towards that as fast as possible. Once again I want to start this wave with 1 HP by rock kicking down on the previous pause wave and then preparing myself and running as fast as possible to that northern area before the 360 gets a hit off on me. Now if it does, once again it's not the end of the world, you just tick eat that singular 360 hit and then you're in your placement spot waiting for the next sound of the next 360 attack with your phoenix necklace equipped. But this is also why you do not want to equip your phoenix necklace until you get to that spot in case you take a 360 hit and proc it early. From here I run into the tick eatable range of the 360 after his first attack. With my phoenix necklace on, I tick eat the first hit, the phoenix procs the second hit so it actually doesn't stack damage and then I tick eat the third hit and so on and so on with auto retaliate and a blowpipe. This makes it perfect. Once again, pretty easy and a relaxing way to get down these weird waves that aren't technically supposed to be that easy to begin with. So wave 54, there's a few ways to do this wave. I've shown in previous videos you can take this wave to the shit rock that's all the way south and line everything up just fine and you could run in with a dark bow and take out the 361 hit at a time. Or you can do it this way where you Sit right on the edge of the Italy rock, go all the way north so you lure the 22 in front of the 360, kill the 90 then that's going to be coming at you, then pull out the 22 from the southern side of Italy, then pull out the 180 from the western side of the northern rock. This puts the 22 in front of the 180, meaning you only have to tank 22 hits. You're going to want to make sure before you pull the 22 out that you have a reasonable HP though because you're going to have to tank a lot of 22 hits. This thing can max a 4 and if you're 1 defense, I would suggest being at least 50 HP before pulling out 22s to block off 180s. 22s blocking off 180s is a very big thing inside this cave around these 180 and 360 waves because it allows for a possibility to kill the 180 by just tanking some very minimal damage from 22s rather than face tanking the massive 25 hits from the 180s. But once again, it's only going to be possible if you start out these waves or these instances of blocking 22s in front of 180s with a decent HP level and using your purple sweets to get that up or your blood spells in my case before you lure out the NPCs. You can also just brute force this wave like I did the first time on this account with a nice ZGS spec, freezing the NPC, then blowpiping it as fast as I possibly could with as much DPS as I could. Now that's not recommended because you could get very unlucky, but I decided to anyways on the welfare run. From these waves forward, it gets a little bit more tricky. The next wave being 55, I'm going to start in the southwest all the way to the western wall kill the 22 as soon as it gets in my attack range, then I can kill the 90 behind the 180 with a mid-tier range weapon like my magic shortbow imbued. Now I don't want to use a blowpipe because this is going to pull me out in front of the 180, I'll get slapped by the 180, as well the 360 is going to hit me, so this would be a very bad situation. This is why I like having these longer range weapons on hand. Alright, wave 56, this is one you're going to once again have to lure and prepare your HP on the paused wave prior by using a rock kick or whatever your self-inflicting damage item is. You're going to get your HP down to 1, and then as soon as wave 56 starts, you're going to run as far west as you can to the western wall. You're going to then wait for the next attack with your phoenix necklace on, and then run to the very tip of the western rock on the northern side of it. This is going to barely just trap that southeast 2 spawn of the 45 on the tip of the rock like we talked about earlier, as well it's going to trap the 180 behind the 360. And now you're going to barely be in the blowpipe range here of actually being able to tick eat and auto retaliate that 360. As soon as you've killed the 360 in this wave, this is a must have food wave, you're going to want to eat one or two pieces of food. You're going to want to pull out the 45, kill the 45 in front of the 180, now go further west to pull out the 222 so you only have one of them on you while still blocking off the 180 and because you ate that food you have enough HP to then tank the 22s and clear out the 180, finally then the 22s and then finally lure over the 90 and clear that to complete the wave. Wave 57 is going to be just another wave where you want to use the 22 as a blocking zone for the 180 and you want to start this wave with a decent HP level or if you're higher defense you cannot waste as many sweets and maybe start the wave with 20 to 30 HP. Wave 58 is another tricky one, but only if you're low stats. If you're not low stats, you can go ahead and just blowpipe the 90 as soon as you see him by going northwest, 
and kill him, out DPS him as quick as possible with some blowpipe specs, then go for the 45 and lower that to 22s with some higher HP and some more food, therefore blocking off the 180 coming your way from the east and then sitting at the western wall. If you're lower HP though, you can start this wave like I've done in my lower fire kit videos by starting north of the 90. Here you can block everything south of the 90 besides 122, so you can then sit there, wait for the 22 to come your way, kill the 22 coming your way, and actually then start ticketing the 90. 59, you're going to want to go ahead and start in that new northern area north of Italy but not too far east. This is going to allow the 45 to be stuck in front of the 360 as long as you don't go fully in the corner here. This is going to then allow you to walk west out to grab the 45, kill the 45, split it into 22s, then trap off the 180 yet again before it comes from the trapped northwestern side it was sitting in. For wave 60, I like going to the western wall on the southwest corner of the west rock. And that's because I can go in and out, take 290 hits with my dark bow, and trade those 290 hits for a singular dark bow hit on the nearest 90, because then I can go back to the western wall where the 180 is blocking the other 90s off and heal up to a reasonable amount of HP, being at least. 40 because you do get 390 hits no matter what and you want to be above the max hit of 313s being 39 HP. Alright the controversial wave, wave 61. Now there is a way you can actually stand from the start of the wave and not have to lure the 360 but you have to be within like three tiles of the 360 and when you're so close to the 360 you have a lot less clearance to tick eat him and auto retaliate with that blowpipe. So you could take this route by standing in a very specific tile next to the 360 and trap both 180s off behind the 360 but like I said you're going to be very close to it and if you have any lag whatsoever I do not suggest doing that and I have a lot of lag so we're not going to do that instead I'm going to start in the traditional spot being the eastern wall north of the Italy rock from here I'm going to throw my peanut on and make sure my HP was already set to 1 before this wave started and do the traditional lure where I move over to the 360 but this time with a blowpipe as close as I can get right before the wall hits and then from there I'm able to go into its ticky zone with my P-neck manip and finally go ahead and auto retaliate down that 360. For the last wave, wave 62, you're just going to take both 360s on the other side of Italy and dark bow them down. This is very easy and a nice relaxing time before you have to finally take on Jad. So here we go, finally Jad. Luckily Jad spawns in a perfect location for this rotation number two, another reason why I love it so much. He spawns south of Italy Rock, so we're going to be dark bowing this whole fight down. You're going to have to learn how to tick eat Jad though, and I suggest you do this maybe on a main or something else before you get all the way here and just fail. You're going to want to have to tick eat Jad a little bit differently than every other NPC. Every other NPC fires its attack and then you tick eat instantly before the attack hits you. Jad is a little bit different. When he stomps, for instance, his real attack doesn't fire until that thing comes falling down your head from the air. So when you hear the range attack slam on the ground, it's going to be after he actually slams his feet on the ground, and you're going to want to have to tick heat the range attack after you hear the sound effect. Now for the mage attack, it's a little delayed as well. He fires up the mage attack, and you don't actually tick eat till you hear the second phase of the mage attack between the projectile of the mage attack and when it hits you, not when he's firing it up. So the tick eats for Jad, yes, are a little bit difficult, a little bit more different than what you're used to. They're just a little bit more delayed from when you have to start the eat. You don't want to eat as soon as you see him fire up his attack like every other NPC. You want to eat after you see the projectile actually coming at you. This also means you have less clearance to tick heat and any lag is really going to fuck you over at this point. And I've had it happen many times. It's not fun. A lot of the times you just get unlucky, especially if you have Cox internet. So once you have Jad's HP down to half, for some reason I think this has changed. It used to be exactly 160 HP or lower he would spawn healers. But when I did this attempt, since I've last done an attempt maybe two years ago, it's different, it's literally like 140 or 130 HP he spawns the healers at. But yeah, when he spawns his healers, I would say at around 140 HP, you're gonna wanna actually run all the way back instantly whenever you see those heal effects happen on him to the eastern side of Italy Rock. Here you're gonna wait until the second healer actually comes right up to him and traps him in place. From there you can then run a little bit west and south to where you get to this point. From that point you wait for the other two healers to then match the two that are currently healing him 
Yes, you let them heal him up a bit, it's not a big deal. As long as he doesn't hit full HP, he's not gonna respawn the healers. You wanna make sure you get all the healers on you. Step back out again if you need to, to grab them all before the first two come at you. Sometimes this takes a try or two, and you'll have to re-log and do the whole fight or the half of the fight over again. You'll know when you have it though, when you have all four healers lined up on this corner and you're ready to blowpipe them down, Jad's lower than full HP, and therefore they won't ever respawn again. Once you've killed these healers, Jad's gonna be like 20 health from full, so it's like you have to do part of the Jad fight all over again, but from here you can just do your new Tiki strategy with Jad, use the Dark Bow, and it's pretty much history from there. Now I know all of this sounds super complicated and this is a very long guide, I just wanted to be as specific as possible when it comes to doing a note per fire cape, and what I've done over the last 500 capes is pretty much this method right here. Whenever you get used to it, your worst enemy is really not just your skill set, it's the lag. There's not much skill set involved with this at all, it's just knowing what needs to be done. You don't have to be quick at this at all, you don't have to have very good motor skills even, it's really not that bad. Alright, here we go, this is for the finisher. I just need one more good hit on this Jad right here and then I will finally have my first fire cape on this no prayer account. And this one is probably the one I'm going to sacrifice, but here we go, this is probably it. 0 and 10. Okay, he is dead. There we go. A time of 2 hours and 46 minutes. Kind of a long one there, but that's probably because I'm trying to save sweets and I'm literally in a cow. Alright, so I'm going over reviewing how much money did I actually spend on consumables here. It's looking like about 9 mil, and that's kind of what I predicted. Maybe a little bit over our goal. I wanted it to be less than 9 mil spent, but we spent 9.3 mil. Oh my god. For a one prayer or no prayer fire cape though, that's literally almost nothing, so I'm satisfied with that. And the cow was just kind of for the laughs. You know, it's not going to be that bad if you actually invest in some good gear. Like for an instance here, I'm going to go ahead and put up my other gear I used and see what the total cost of this is without just consumables. It's looking like about 20 mil. So you could invest in a Fury and, you know, get away with that just for a couple more mil. All of that good stuff. You probably, uh, you know, don't want a combat bracelet. Alright, now that I got that over with, I'm probably going to end up sacrificing that to get into the Inferno. So we got to get a second cape, and I'm going all out for this one. I've gotten Black Chins, I'm even buying an AGS to flinch with a special attack that's better than the ZGS. And here we go, this is what our inventory is looking like. It looks like a total shit fest of items. It doesn't make any sense probably to the layman's eye, but you know, for me, I'm going to speed run this cape. Probably not, but I'm going to take it a little bit more seriously. And after I said that, I've got to go back and buy a brimstone ring because someone informed me that this thing has all plus fours. I don't have imbued yet, so I'm going to use this over the B ring and the archer's ring. And i got to hurry back because we just have a couple of minutes before the actual rotation 2 hits. I'm in a rush here. Alright, we've barely made it back here. I am re-gearing my inventory. I pre-potted. I'm running in. We have less than probably 20 seconds to hit this entrance, and I think that this should be good. Hopefully, let's see if we get the actual rotation too. We can tell by the middle spawn of the 22 there. There we go. Okay, so we're set. I'm gonna try and rush through this cape and get a second one just so I can sacrifice the first and train with the second. All right, so as I mentioned before, Chen's just speed up the process you'll see here. Obviously, there's gonna be two 22s out of this 45's body that I can hit with Chen's, etc., etc. There's a lot of instances, and there's even some 22s in the back there that are coming together that I can Chen. Chins also have this longer range, so if you really don't want to bring that mid-range weapon like I did this time with the MSP imbued, you could probably just rely on the black chins for most of those instances, even though they are a bit expensive. This time I'm using uh, sort of a prey flick, not really. I'm leaving it on a little bit longer for more DPS. So as you can see, these eats here are really lagging. Uh, this is very scary. Once again, Cox is probably going to fail me here. And... God, these are so close. Like, I'm, it's eating the last tick, and then, yeah, it doesn't even eat. So, that's what happens if you have bad ping. You can't really do this method at all. You need good internet, decent internet, not cox. Don't get cox. So, yeah, I'm going to have to redo this cape now. Thanks a lot, cox. So, for obvious reasons, I'm going to cut to the chase and not probably showcase all these clips for this next run. You're probably tired of seeing red and black. Yeah, me too. Anyways, if you're not, if you do want a whole walkthrough, if you want to follow along with the pace bin with some visual reference, I'm going to go ahead and link in an entire unlisted video as well in the description. Probably pretty low in the description there. And it's going to just have the entire run through wave 1 through 62 on this exact account, probably in this 
exact setup so you can follow along and just the parts where I do melee flinches I would just substitute with you know running back with the blowpipe and turning auto retaliate on like I showed earlier on Okay, so I did want to record this. Look how much I'm lagging right now again. I'm pretty sure I would have just died if he did not have a zero right there because my eats are coming in so slowly. If I was closer to this NPC and used the traditional method of blocking the two wannies behind him, like two tiles out from the 360, his attack, his projectile would hit me sooner. And I would have definitely died in this instance because my eats are taking so long to raise my HP after the point in time where I click them. Sometimes they're quicker than others, but other... T oh my god, that would have killed me right there. That would have literally killed me. The eat was delayed and it, it hit, hit a zero. zero. If that did not hit a zero right there, I would have literally died. I'm gonna rewind that clip. Holy fucking shit. But because of that last instance, I decided, yeah, I'm putting the metronome on. I'm not taking any chances. If you lag, the metronome lag, so it'll let me know before I step out in front of Jad as well. It'll let me know if the ticket needs to come in delayed because the actual lag will show between the projectile of Jad and when it hits me through the metronome sound effects. All right, this should be it if I can hit. There we go. This, this should be the kill. Awesome, cape number two, let's see the time. A little bit quicker this time, about 40 minutes quicker, around two hours exactly for that cape. I did kind of slack off towards the end, but we got it in a reasonable amount of time. Let's see the damages on this one. Okay, so 8.6 mil, if I add the chins, it'll go over, but if I did not use the chins, surprisingly, this would have cost me less. I think it's just because more DPS is less sweets used overall, so maybe that that's a big factor here so maybe you do want to get some better gear if you want to save on consumables but also you need a like a kind of midway between the two and probably bringing blood spells would still minimize the amount of sweets you could use so the optimal setup i would say would probably be good dps but also blood spells and ways to heal yourself by beyond purple sweets all right just so you know that i mean business i'm going to sacrifice this cape right now today I don't really need it, I've got two, so here we go, I'm gonna go ahead and send this one in, and we can actually enter the inferno now. I'm gonna go ahead and go in to, uh, you know, regenerate some of my health, some, some of my prayer, because I've lost a lot of that from that fight cave attempt as well. I'm gonna go ahead and get this soundtrack unlocked, why not? But one day we will come back here seriously and make a real attempt once my stats are way, way up from where they're at now. I don't know if you noticed this, but in the last fight cave attempt, I went ahead and got a torso. Shout out to my man Torso, by the way. He's seen me in some pretty odd places, some top secret locations. Keep those on the download, Torso. Don't tell anyone about those. Anyways, shout out Leech BA. They're going to go ahead and leech me a torso for free, and I need it because, once again, strength bonus is going to be the best thing I can have for training, and I need the torso as well down the line in the Inferno because it has more negative magic attack bonus than a normal plate body of any sort, so... I need to be able to splash. If you've seen the first video of this kind of mini series, you'll know why. All right, so today I'm all about strength bonus, fire capes, torsos, and you guessed it, imbued berserker rings. I'm gonna need one of those to train with. Might as well imbue some more rings as well while I'm here. But I'm getting my starter points up. I do need just enough points for a few absorptions before I get onto my real method, my amazing points per hour method of like, I'm going to say around 600k points per hour. But yeah, I do need a starter amount to get those absorptions. So that's what I'm doing now by just running around like a chicken with my head cut off once again, as always. So what's going on here is I used a friend's alt that has the same quest as me. And I tried to get as many one by one melee NPCs as possible. And I had just enough. I had Count Dracula from Vampire Slayer. I had me from Lunar Diplomacy. I had the Tree Spear from Lost City. The uh, Khazar General from Tree Gnome Village. And then I had one more, which I think was King Raoul from What Lies Below. And so what this is going to enable me to do is literally burst possibly even barrage down the line which I'm going to be doing now with overloads possibly very soon when I get a little bit more points as well I'm using absorptions to just negate all the hits from these NPCs and I can stack them once again because they're one by one NPCs and I have an extra account in here because that increases the amount of NPCs it doubles them actually and if I can get another account in here it'll triple the amount of NPCs and I'll have at least a 9x9 nine nine to barrage on so I think that's what I'm going to do now I have another alt that's almost got all these quests done but not quite I need to go ahead and do what lies below on that and then I'll come back and do this method in some more top tier gear with overloads and see what the actual points per hour are going to be on this. All right, here's the other alt, another friend lending me. Thank God for friends, I love you friends. By the way, I am doing what lies below on this because it's the only quest it lacked to basically match the five uh, one by one NPCs I had on the other account. 
So I'm excited to get this account inside the NMZ with the other two accounts and see how much XP per hour I can get with magic as well as how many points per hour I can get just trying to imbue some rings. Alright, so we're back with Overload so we can actually cast Ice Barrage. The great perk about this is look at that, 99 over 82 mage. I can do barrage spells at a very low level and now we're going to have plenty of NPCs between 9 and 12 per spawn to actually hit. I think this is going to be better XP per hour than I was getting in the Ape Atoll tunnels earlier by far. So I'm going to have these two alts follow each other, put melee protect up because they're all melee NPCs. As you can see, I got a lot of prayer bonus. And yeah, then we're going to do a lot of casting. So similar to the MM2 tunnel method that a lot of people use for barrage and enchanting, which I don't have access to because I can't actually do MM2 on this account. I haven't done the monkey madness training. We're going to be able to do the same kind of concept here by following around and stacking up NPCs by making them transparent to where eventually I can clump them, barrage them, and get some pretty good XP as well as points here. So I got an Eldritch Staff Lind. Thank you, by the way, Jenemy. And I am able to actually go ahead and use Power Surges to constantly use the 10% Magic Prayer. So I'm going to go ahead and just use Specs on these guys with the Power Surges, get my prayer up to 120 over 31, and I can constantly just use the Mystic Will or Mystic Might, whichever it is, I can't even remember, the 10% Magic Prayer, and get an extra 10% Magic Increase. So we've just started, and we're already looking at around almost 700k points per hour. Yeah, I'm rounding up, don't worry about it. And we're getting, look at these massive XP drops. I'm getting around 250 to 300k XP an hour, which is way better than the 150k XP an hour I was getting in the MM1 tunnels at that terrible spot that wasn't even that great. So this is looking really good for XP training in the future, although I'm just going to do this now here for points to imbue my rings. All right, here's the Berserker Ring Imbue, the most important one that I'm going to actually train with. More strength bonus has been achieved. I forgot to record the Seer's Ring Imbue, but here's the Archer's Ring Imbue. So once again, this is going to be good for the actual Inferno. All right, so here we are. I don't know what the hell is going on. I've never done Ammonite Crabs. I didn't know these things can aggro you from like two spaces back. So I was confused when people were saying there's a three spot because I didn't find any. Eventually, I found this one after hopping like a thousand times and seeing all these noobs fire striking these things with 100 HP, which kind of seems irrelevant because you could literally go to sand crabs and you wouldn't even out dps them anyways i don't know what i'm doing here uh look at my gear i'm literally using a blessed sarah sword because that's all i can afford right now my bank's looking a little bit low i can't afford a rapier or anything like that so unfortunately we're stuck with the sarah swords and we're going to be training strength from here and af kane while i work on the defense saga account so speaking again of friends and wonderful people this guy just came around and he asked if i needed anything and i said no but he's like where are you at where's your world like, I'm going to come give you something right now. Shout out to Spider. The dude literally gave me enough to train properly. I now have this amazing helmet and these amazing legs and a rapier. So I no longer have to use a Sarah sword with 85 attack. I can train with a rapier. But this also makes one more thing a little bit more complicated here. I'm going to have to go get a rune defender for once. I can't use my two-handed Sarah sword anymore. And I'm going to have to get more strength bonus once again before I can go back and AFK crabs and work on my main account, the defense pier. So I was thinking I was going to get slaughtered because these these legs and this helmet doesn't have good defense bonus and I'm only 40 defense and this runite armor is like 100 and something combat animated. So I thought I was going to get slaughtered, but honestly, I'm only using like two manta rays per fight. I think it's just because my DPS is so good with this gear. Once again, shout out. Also, the claws are insane. I didn't even have that set to strength yet, but there we go. These are some fast kills and some good tokens right now. So I just killed my first Cyclops and I saw that I got a Slayer XP drop of like 100. I was kind of surprised because I haven't done Slayer in this account in literally eight years. It used to be a 10 HP Slayer account. And I think this means my Slayer task is Hill Giants, even though I guess that counts as Cyclops as well. So now I'm going to have to get a Black Mask confirming once again, yeah, 100 Slayer XP right there. Weird. Weird. So that means this is destiny. I was meant to get this defender today. I was meant to be given this beautiful armor by Spider. And now we're getting all these Cyclops kills at an even quicker rate because we have Black Mask. Yeah, we have 74 Slayer and no Slayer home because this was a one defense account. It spent points on blocking task and canceling task and, and actually uh, it wasted all those points. Spectrum. him. Spec him. What the hell is going the with the Isn't he a one by one? Is this just gonna do like shit all? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I found and optimized a new zero damage method for animated armor because I definitely need this. I mean, I was killing them way faster before with a rapier. Don't actually do this. This is ridiculous. My friend told me to try this. Here we go. A steel defender and a long bone 
in the same kill. I'm way dry on this. I'm like two times rate for all these defenders right now. Hopefully we catch up soon. So we did not catch up. We're actually almost at 600 Cyclops KC. We were here almost double the rate, actually more than double. I found out I'm at 399 Slayer points and that means I only need one more point till a Slayer Helm on this account. Yeah, I didn't skip as many tasks as I thought, so this is good. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this last cow fight task and go purchase my Slayer Helm for who knows what. It's just good to have, I guess. We've finished the cow fight task, probably the last task I'll ever do, and I've purchased Malevolent Masquerade. Is that how you say it? Who cares? I got a Slayer Helm now. Cool. Yeah, I can wear that and probably never wear it again, but we have it in the bank and we never have to worry about it again. Okay, so for real this time, I'm AF Kane, Ammonite Crabs, and I'm gonna sit here for like the next three months, besides whenever I'm moving, I'm gonna put my FPS lock on and yeah, we're gonna get some attack, strength, range, probably not magic here, we'll probably go back to NMZ for magic, why not, but I'm gonna do a lot of AFK because I have to work on the other account, and that's gonna give us a lot of time to max this account out. Eventually we're gonna do Song of the Elves, Dragon Slayer 2, some cool quests on this account, and then finally, we're gonna take on the Inferno with no prayer, and see how that turns out. Now, no promises once again, but we're gonna see how it works out. So, thank you guys for watching today's video, once again I appreciate your time, and the watch time this adds to the video, if you've made it all the way this far, it really helps me out. Also, if you did enjoy the video, why not subscribe? There's a lot more to come, specifically with the Defense Saga series. It'll be a while before I get back to this account, but in the next video, expect a Defense Saga series upload. No, that has not been concluded. I have not quit that account. It's still going on. So I'll see you then. Thanks again, everyone, for everything, and peace out.